let's uh, welcome our next speaker, Pieros Papadeas, and uh, his monster device. So let's hope he's not trying to cook us with radiation. Hey all, um, I'm Pieros, and uh, this is Nikos and Nemo from the Satnox team. And uh, worry not, this is not a radiation device, as you will see in a bit. Uh, so we, we are here to talk about SATNOX, and SATNOX stands for the Satellite Network Open Ground Station. And here you can see one ground station, uh, SATNOX. So what we are, we are a group of uh, satellite enthusiasts from, from Greece. Uh, that was the core team, although the community now has grown beyond Greece. And uh, we love satellites. We like to communicate with them, we track them, uh, we check them out, we see all the launches. We aspire at some time near in the future to design our own satellites, and generally we are um, space nerds, if you might like it. So um, we'll start with the basics. Earth has many, many satellites. We're talking about more than 6,000 satellites that are out there, um, and those are kind of like the operational, basically, uh, plus thousands and thousands of pieces of junk. Um, and not all of them are interesting to track and talk to and listen to, uh, but you can safely say that there are a couple of thousand that you can, um, you know, it might be interested, um, interesting for you to, to track and, uh, and follow. And the categories of those satellites are, are um, things that we uh, would like to track in order to get scientific data from them and also their status updates and uh, relay other information uh, about exactly what is the payload that uh, they have on, on them. In order to track satellites, uh, we use ground stations. And it could be ground stations like this one, big and scary ones. This is the ESA main ground station. Um, and the setup with multiple ground stations you can see over there. Um, but you can also go all the way down to uh, things like our ground station. And uh, what a ground station essentially does is it tracks a satellite across the sky and it makes sure to communicate uh, in the appropriate band and uh, frequency, basically. Um, with the satellite. And uh, the specific um, subcategory of satellites that we are interested in are the low Earth orbit satellites. And the low Earth orbit satellites have, um, have been gaining mass popularity lately uh, due to the CubeSat movement. Uh, I don't know if you heard about CubeSats. CubeSats are uh, small satellites, like really small ones, uh, 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters, uh, like a cube. Um, which have um, low life expectancy, um, so short life expectancy. We just throw them out, uh, they do an experiment, uh, and um, basically are easily and affordable to, to make, and uh, you don't really care about having it there for, for long. Um, and increasingly over the past years, uh, especially over the past two years, there have been more and more projects uh, that have been using CubeSats to get data from outer space, um, or run experiments on uh, microgravity uh, situations. Um, so we would like to um, be part of this um, ecosystem and uh, track those uh, low Earth orbit satellites. Um, now, because of the orbit, uh, because of the low Earth orbit, um, uh, which ranges from 200 kilometers to 2,000 kilometers uh, above ground, um, the satellites, the, the period that the satellite does, in order, um, the time period uh, that it goes around the Earth um, is considerably smaller than the period that the Earth is revolving itself around, uh, around itself, the sidereal day, as we say it. So the result is basically that um, we don't see those satellites all day. Uh, in best case scenarios, uh, and depending on the inclination and some other orbital um, uh, aspects, uh, we only get to see those kinds of satellites three or four times a day on a good pass, which means uh, one that is close to our zenith. Uh, so it's, they're close to us, basically. So that creates a, a complex issue of how often you, we get to communicate with our satellites. And uh, this was pro problematic. And uh, we thought, why not creating um, a ground station network, basically many ground stations connected to each other, that can share observational assignments and create a global um, uh, network that can track satellites all the time, synchronously, so not asynchronously. So instead of waiting basically for a satellite to pass above you, you can use the network and use another ground station that has access to that satellite at its given uh, time. So we started um, with looking how the stack would look like, like uh, how should that uh, be 
constructed. And uh, we, we said that we wanted um, all different users to be able to equally access different ground stations. And that will be managed by what we call the Global man Management Network, or SATNOX Network for short. Um, so the different users would go in the network, would select which uh, satellite they want to track, and then the observational assignments would be sent to the ground stations, uh, which they will do the actual observation, tracking the satellite and recording the data um, from the satellites and sending them back to the network to be available for everyone. So in the process of thinking about that, we, we saw that the, the materials, the open source things that were out there, software and hardware, were not really enough to do that. Um, so we decided to, to uh, do the hard thing and design pretty much all the uh, different parts of the stack from scratch. Um, so I'm going to go quickly through all the different parts of the stack we have designed um, so you can get an overview of the project. So we started with the ground station. The ground station is the actual uh, instrumentation. Uh, this is the one um, you can see here in a portable configuration we brought together with us. Um, it's 3D printed, most of the parts inside, the gears, the assembly, uh, the things are, um, even if it's not 3D printed, it's from readily available things that you can find in electronics or uh, electrics hardware shop. Um, and um, we um, kept the cost low. The whole thing that you can see here is uh, cost approximately 350 uh, euros. Uh, but at the same time, it's reliable in terms of the specs. Um, so it, it has um, the tracking, the precision of the tracking, uh, the repeatedness of the movements and everything else falls into specs of uh, well-known brands for rotators and uh, rel relative uh, commercial uh, uh, products. Um, here you can see a ground station deployed in, in Athens on top of our hockey space. Um, and what's interesting here is that we use a helical antenna. So we also designed the antennas ourselves. Um, this is a UHF helical antenna, and here you can see on the one that we have here, a UHF Yagi antenna and a VHF Yagi antenna. The bands that we're using and we're focusing right now are the radio amateur bands of the 2 meters VHF and 70 centimeters UHF. Many low Earth orbit satellites use those bands, so it's quite convenient for us to uh, develop antennas around that. Uh, and the whole reception um, um, of the signals is based on top of the, I'm sure many of you might know this, the DVB-T, the cheap Chinese DVB-T, RTL-SDR um, um, receiver, SDR receiver, um, which is pretty handy and coupled with a, an, a good LNA, it can actually give you uh, nice results. The, the signal cuts across the noise, so we can, we can get reception for even hard passes, as we, um, we call the, the crossings of the sky. Um, And also, uh, what's uh, important for us is to uh, make sure that the station and the whole project is either permanent or portable in terms of the setup. Now, you can see the portable configuration here. So we developed um, uh, for ourselves a, a tripod so we can, we can get the portable configurations in place. Um, everything that you see is documented, um, all the designs regarding hardware and software on satnox.org, and all the, um, uh, even the documentation on how to actually make those things are available on our website. Um, but also, because uh, temporary con uh, configurations like this, like a portable one, are not the only concern. Most of the ground station configurations are permanent ones. Um, we also designed the Eradome. We're still working on that. Uh, there are um, big things to, to fix around that. Um, how much signal do we lose? If it's going to, you know, sustain a hurricane or not, and um, all those other things. But um, apparently, right now, it uh, sustains Greek weather, which is not the worst weather in the world. So that's. <laughs> That's not really <laughs> a good uh, um, um, measurement, but um, uh, we're willing to test it um, across other uh, extreme conditions and uh, check how it, it works out. Now, going to the software level of things, uh, back on the really high level, the network part, right? Um, then we, d we designed everything from scratch. Uh, it's basically a Django app that does the scheduling um, of the different configurations. You can go in, you can create an account, uh, you can uh, log in and create a ground station uh, for yourself. So you can connect your ground station to, to the actual network. And then your ground station then is going to be commanded by the station itself. Uh, you can see a live demo at dev.satnox.org. Uh, everything is made in uh, Python and Django right now. And some JavaScript uh, libraries on top of it for the uh, data handling and the maps and everything. Um, and here you can see a sample uh, scheduling of observation. How, you know, what's the actual end result of the UX? So you go in, you click a new observation, you can select from a list of satellites that are available. Um, in this example, we're using 
the fun cube one. Um, and then you can select from a list of transponders which are different um, um, transmission devices that are used from the satellite, so which frequencies we want to use. And then a start and an end time. And by selecting the start and the end time, you're actually having all the uh, parameters for the system to calculate all the possible windows from the ground stations that are, are in the network. So if we click calculate observation, you can see the, the calculated timeline. Fix the timeline um, according to your needs. Uh, probably add an hour, subtract an hour. And once you do that, uh, you can then schedule an observation and then when it's time, the, the ground stations will execute the observation and return the results, record the results and return them back to the network. So um, that's already coded um, and it's live and you can check it out on dev.satnorc.org. Now, once you have the scheduled operations on the network, the client uh, takes care, which runs on the ground station itself, either on an onboard PC or uh, your laptop or a server or, or something that is connected to the instrumentation. Uh, the client, uh, which is modular and extensible, and I'll come to that in a bit, um, takes care of receiving the scheduling uh, from, uh, from the network and executing it on time. It's written in Python. Uh, it's based on existing protocols, which was something really important for us because we wanted to, uh, for, to give the opportunity for everyone that has other rotators, commercial one or uh, radios, to be able to use the same stack and be part of our network. So regardless of whether you want to actually construct a Satnox ground station, you can be a, a part of Satnox network just by having you know, a, uh, a rotator, a commercial rotator and a, a radio. Uh, because we're using the same protocols. So you can hook them up in a Satnox client that runs in a Raspberry Pi or something um, and be part of the network. Uh, now, going back, oh, that is, is it? Yeah, I cannot zoom, zoom it out, but it's not really needed. So just to step back uh, for a sec to, to see the overview of the project and the modularity and what's the different sol solutions, basically, that uh, we can supply um, through Satnox project. Um, you can, you start first with a question whether you would like your, your ground station to be connected or not to the network. So if you'd like to be connected to the network, you create an account on the network and you connect it to a Satnox client, which runs on top of an uh, Android and a BigBlueBlack or a Raspberry Pi or whatever other embedded PC. Uh, we're using right here OpenWRT on top of a TP-Link um, router and it runs pretty well. So once you select that configuration, uh, you're gonna be connected on the network. But many times, and ourselves also, we want something portable or something that we can only use ourselves uh, because we want to do something specific. So you can skip the network part, skip the client part, and use some really good uh, open source tools like ZPredict and ZQRX um, to have um, observation of a satellite done by yourself tethered to your laptop directly. Um, the, um, um, the embedded PC will stay the same, and then you can select whether you build a Satnox ground station or you use a commercial rotator, and then what kind of configuration you're gonna do uh, on your antennas. So um, what has been uh, happening lately in the project is that we've been really heads down, uh, as we've, we've been part of the Hockey Day Prize um, uh, competition and the Hockey Day Prize ran for almost seven months and it was um, a really long competition with m many stages and stuff and uh, finally we were um, happy enough to, to win the first prize um, in the Hockey Day Prize and uh, it was super important for us to, to be able to get in touch with m more members um, out there from the HAM community and the radio amateur community um, and the satellite uh, amateur community um, to contribute back to our project and our ideas and you know, get the visibility that we want for the project. Um, right now we've been working mainly on expanding um, the mechanical uh, specifications and making sure that the mechanical specifications of the rotator are um, um, of what we could be considered the best um, right now. Um, plus expanding to other bands. So right now we're using VHF and UHF, but also S band on 2.4 gigahertz is uh, something that comes up um, on the R&D part. And definitely we need you. We need people um, that on all different sorts of things. So we have software on Python, we have um, network configurations, we have things that we need on or even storage. Uh, the amount of storage that we're producing uh, by operating the, the whole network is just huge for us right now. 
and when you find solutions to those things. Um, but also mechanical engineers, people on RF electronics, uh, people who have experience on satellite communications and everything in between. So come find us out um, here um, and uh, also on satnoc.org. Uh, and we have a wonderful community that is uh, growing right now on community.satnox.org. Um, so thanks. Check, uh, check satnox.org for more info and uh, let us know if you have any more questions. And we also have stickers. You should come get some stickers here. <laughs>just wondering how do you handle if you have two people who want to track um, the, the same the within the same time period so right, right now the scheduling the right now the scheduling algorithm is pretty uh, dumb right like a first come first serve kind of thing so uh, we don't optimize for possible um, satellites because we don't have the load to uh, know what's going to happen in terms of traffic and what's going to be needed uh, um, in, um, in the short term. So right now, if you schedule one operation and you block one ground station, uh, then the next one coming in, uh, the ground station in this time frame is not gonna be available for, for another observation, obviously. Uh, but what we are examining right now is how we can optimize this and, and check uh, if there are multiple ground stations in one, one point that are close to each other, uh, there's no need for having both of them listen to, to the ground station. So we can leave one out and the other ones can be um, available for other observations. But first we need to analyze, once we get the network up and running more and more, and we have more ground stations, we will analyze how, you know, um, this goes about. Okay, so thank you very much, Pierre.